This is I, Oddest Human Dad. Um, I'm here today to talk about the voting tools for the Wild Tanks community. We're conducting on-chain voting, and I'm going to walk you through how that works. So I'm here at the wildtanks.com homepage, and from here you can either go directly to wildtanks.com slash vote, or under Tanks Tools, there's a new option at the bottom that just simply says vote. So I'm going to click there, and you're going to see at the very top this new ballot, right? So up here we have a description. It is about the wife beater trait renaming. Um, it gives you a little time about when the polls close. They close at October 28th, um, midnight UTC. I would encourage you to get your votes in uh, about you know 15 or 20 minutes before that at the very least so that you don't run any, into any blockchain synchronization issues. Um, obviously this is all enforced on chain, so you will not be able to create ballots after that time. Um, but you know, for now, uh, you should have plenty of time given that there's 15 days left. So if I look here, I can see that the ballot is underlined, right? So I, I hover over that and it pops up a little tool tip, uh, explaining what's going on. And I'll, I'll talk about this more in detail as we go through it. But you know, the basic premise is that votes are occurring on chain by minting one ballot NFT for every wild tanks NFT that you hold. So if you have five wild tanks, you'll create five ballots, and those ballots will be new NFTs, which will be sent to a ballot box. Now, voting below will require you to tr sign transactions that create these NFTs, but you will never be required to have wild tanks leave your wallet. So if there is a site asking you to send your wild tanks to vote, that's phishing. We will never ask you to send in your wild tanks. The on-chain verification occurs by having you send the wild tanks to yourself as sort of a proof of ownership. So please do not get scammed, right? And the, the last thing is see the YouTube tutorial. That's the video you're watching. So uh, if you have more questions, always refer back to this, but never send in your wild tanks. That would be a phishing scam. Um, we can do that verification without requiring you to send those in. Okay, so let's read more about this ballot, right? In the original wild tanks collection, there's a trait called clothing, which has more than 10 unique values. One of these values is called wife beater, right? This is a common phrase that I grew up with, especially in the American dialect. Um, it's essentially meant to refer to a uh, a uh, an undershirt, but it, it has had a kind of deleterious meaning. So I thought it would be best for the community if we had a discussion about whether this attribute should be changed due to the potentially sensitive nature of the term. So the question at the end of the day is, should the clothing trait value wife beater be changed? And if so, what should the new value be? Um, note that we're not a DAO. This is not intended to be used for DAOs. There are lots of tools out there for governance tokens and DAO management. <laughs> These are merely advisory votes. And I think it'd be fun to have on-chain verification so that the votes could be completely replayed, but um, these are not intended to be legally binding. So before I click vote now, I just want to show you the section down here around prior ballots. Um, these won't be real-time results. This is not like a Twitter poll. I, I'm not looking for this to just kind of be a quick vote and then you see what's happening live. What these are going to be, are, these are going to be more sort of formal ballot counting, polls closed, and then at the end, um, I'm going to show you how we walk through and count all the results. But for now, you'll just see votes not counted yet. And then once um, once the vote has occurred and the polls have closed, we'll put a little more detailed information here about the distribution of votes. So, OK, so I'm ready to vote on the wife beater trait renaming. So I'm going to click vote now. And what you're going to see is this little pop up. And it's telling you how to cast your vote, right? The first thing you'll notice is that you have to connect your wallet to display the eligible votes. So before you connect your wallet, all of these choices are grayed out. You can't click any of them. And if you try to vote now, it'll just say, please connect to wallet. So I'm going to close this. And you can use Eternal, Flint, NAMI, any of these choices here. But I, I have a NAMI with the Wild Tangs handle in it. So I'm going to connect my NAMI wallet. And now when I click vote now, it'll pop up and it'll actually show me how many wild tangs are in there. The ballot choice below will have seven votes as power. Um, in the future, I'm, I'm potentially thinking through ways so that you could split your vote. If you have seven votes, you can split three over here, four over here. Uh, for now, you could split them between wallets and just switch which wallet you've uh, engaged with. And so that'll do three votes at a time, then four votes at a time. But for now, um, the entire wallet's voting power is all done at once. 
So the options here you'll see have been proposed by the community. So wife beater would be no change. Um, undershirt KQ, that's for King Qualia. That's the one recommended by the team. There are things like A shirt, beater, tang top, um, all sorts of fun choices here that you can look through. So I'm going to do the one recommended by the team. I'm going to click undershirt KQ, and then I'm just going to click vote now. Um, before I do this, I want to explain how it works a, a bit more again. So I have seven wild tangs in this wallet. So the seven wild tangs will prompt the creation of seven new ballot NFTs. So these are seven new assets and we're going to see what they look like. But, you know, these seven assets are really intended to be um, the the proof that you have voted. So right as you create them, the ballots are going to be sent to a smart contract, which is kind of a ballot box. And then at the very end, once all of the ballots are in the ballot box and the polls have closed, I'll show you how counting the votes work. But for now, I'll just click vote now and it's preparing my ballot. And then we'll see the familiar NAMI wallet pop up here, right? It's telling me I'm going to have a transaction. Uh, this this amount of ADA should be low, right? It should be one, two, three ADA, right? It's it's really just used for fees, and um, which is a little bit higher in this case because we have some smart contract interaction. Um, but in addition, it's going to be used to lock up the min UTXO with these ballots. Now, for this, say, two and a half ADA, right? I'm going to lock up seven assets with two and a half ADA inside the ballot box. When the votes are all counted, I will get those back, right? So this is actually two and a half ADA that you'll spend, but you'll receive back with your commemorative voting NFTs. Um, and then we'll talk later about how you could unlock or reclaim that ADA. But for now, all you need to know is this should be a very low dust amount. Um, you can see that I'm sending seven assets and two and a half ADA right over here. And I'm sending it to this contract. So I'm going to pull up this. I'm going to copy this contract and I'm going to pull it up um, in pool.pm. I believe I already have it up, but let's refresh the page. You'll see there's nothing there, right? So this is an empty ballot box. There are no votes. Um, so if I go back to my vote page and I see all of these, right? All this metadata here. What I can do is I can actually show what's going to happen when I mint these assets. Now, um, for the technical folks in the audience, this is SIP25 metadata. It's it's just like the Wild Tang's NFTs. But the metadata is not actually used to vote. I'm putting together a community uh, improvement proposal, which is going to lay out how the vote works. Uh, the vote occurs entirely on chain without the use of metadata. But this is just a fun little way that we can get some commemorative NFTs out of the process. So if you take a look here, this is the ballot that you're going to send to the ballot box, right? So again, none of this metadata is used in the actual vote counting, but it's kind of fun. It, it shows you what the wild tanks that did the vote was. It's going to show you what your vote was down here. Um, and if you ever change your vote later and recast your vote, you can do that. And this vote attribute will change. So, you know, it's really a fun way to uh, to get back something to show that you voted kind of like an I voted sticker or a, or a signed um, signature proof of voting. So I'm pretty comfortable with this transaction now, right? I, I see the three ADA going out. I'm not losing any Wild Tang's assets. That would be a phishing transaction. Um, and I'm minting seven new assets that go to this contract. So I'm going to sign this here. And when I go back to the web page, I'm going to see this little pop-up that I've successfully voted in this transaction. So we can look at this transaction on Cardano Scan or C Explorer like we normally have. Um, and you'll also see this message here. Your vote has been cast successfully. When all the votes are counted, you will receive a commemorative NFT recording your vote. You may close the form now. So I'm going to close the form. Uh, and if I click vote now, that vote's still, you know, it's going to tell me, hey, you already voted. Um, but I can come back at any time, right? So I can come back here. And then if I connect my NAMI and I vote again, well, I get all the things here. And so you're kind of thinking, why can you vote twice, right? So uh, again, for sort of the technical folks in the audience, every time you're minting one of these, the ballot name is exactly tied to the wild tanks that was doing the vote. So if you do a second vote, it's actually going to turn your commemorative NFT into a fungible token. Um, and all we do when we do the ballot counting is we count the most recently minted fungible token. So essentially you can update your vote. 
uh, all of the votes will be updated to have the same vote choice. Um, and the ballot counter will make sure that it reduces it or, um, excuse me, deduplicates all of those votes. But I'm not going to vote again. I'm just going to show you that the first vote I have now oh, automatically refreshed. I see seven votes in here, right? Seven NFTs. They're of this specific policy, which represents the current ballot initiative. And then I can see here that here are those seven votes, right? And so every new vote that we do on chain is going to have a separate policy. Um, I can explain why that is technically, but essentially each time the minting policy will change and that's how you'll know which vote uh, is underway. Okay, so that's where it ends for a user. So if you're a Wild Tanks, uh, Wild Tanks community member and you want to vote, I hope this tutorial was helpful. Um, you can end the video right here. Uh, I'm going to walk through a little bit on the back end side right now. Okay, so I have this handy little control panel. Uh, it's a bit of a 90s interface, a little, little GeoCities throwback. Um, but it's very bare bones, right? So it's a locally running um, voting page. It's, it's, it's from the Cardano-NFTMint-Frontend repository, which I will pull up right here for you. And you can see inside this Cardano NFT JS toolkit with all this information inside of source JavaScript, there is a voting.js page. And this has all of the, the stuff and the logic we just used to vote. And then also we'll have the logic in here for how to redeem. So I encourage you to read that on your own time. So I'm going to go back to this web page. Um, give it a quick refresh. And when I connect my wallet, the wallet that needs to be connected here is the one that has been authorized for the vote. So the authorization is based on the payment public key hash. So in my case, that's the wild tanks public key hash. It's something like 2B2F, you know, yada, yada, yada. And you can find that in Cardano scan as the, um, the, the first portion of the uh, full hex identifier for your address. Um, but right here, we'll just know that that's wild tanks and so I'll connect to Nami. On this dashboard, right, it's just, it's showing us what a sample ballot choice was. We've already walked through voting in the first half of that, so we don't need to click vote now or see what's going on there. Um, but what we do want to look is for this administrative use only, right? So if I pull back up my smart contract, I see seven NFTs here. So what I'm going to expect is when I hit count votes, it's going to go to the smart contract, look at those seven NFTs that are locked there, and determine what their inline datum is. The inline datum portion is what actually represents the vote here. So we don't even need to look at metadata. We don't need to look at mint transactions. All we need to do is look in UTXO order based on when the UTXO was created on the blockchain and what the inline datum is there. Um, and that's gonna pop up as a nice little JSON file. Um, you also notice down here, it automatically downloaded it for me. So I'll just pop that open to show you kind of what that looks like, right? Um, you can see here that this is the uh, address that voted. That is a very important piece of information because we're going to send them back the NFT at the very end. Um, it shows you uh, what their vote actually was and how many tokens, you know, how many accounts of that. That should typically be one. Um, you know, it, it wouldn't really make sense, but technically you could construct a transaction based on the smart contract where you... Um, you had multiple multiple iterations of the same asset, right? If you had multiply named assets, but um, you would have to, in the initial transaction, you would have to spend that. So um, it, it's not likely for this to ever occur, but hypothetically we could kind of play with the count here. So what that's gonna mean is that this asset was voted on by this address, created this vote with an inline datum with one count. Right, so we can see here seven entries. And if I go back to my 90s UI, I can see here that it's printed out all these results for me. So the polls haven't closed, obviously, but let's say the polls had closed, right? The official way to close out a vote, and you can do multiple votes at once because each vote type is gonna be keyed off the uh, policy ID. But once we know we're done with voting, we're gonna redeem the ballots. What the redeem balance is going to do is because you're the authorized public key hash here, you're able to redeem from the smart contract, you and only you as the vote counter. 
um, that vote redemption is going to actually send uh, send that vote token back to the voter that uh, that is in that is in the datum. In in future uh, iterations, I would like this to also be verified on chain. Uh, V1 does not have this because we have to trust the vote counter anyway. But you know, technically, in the future, we would like to implement um, automated smart contract logic where you can only send back a UTXO to the voter in the datum. Okay, so I'm going to click redeem ballots. And because the voter in this case was me, you'll see it's a plus seven assets. But in the future, um, it shouldn't really say anything. It should just have send to here. It'll it'll maybe charge you a little bit for the fees. Um, but in this case, we're actually getting money back because I was the voter um, and I'm also the redeemer. But in the future, this will just have you sign for a small amount of fees and it'll batch up and send those ballots back to the users. So I'm going to sign here and I can see that I successfully counted ballots in this most recent transaction. So I'm going to give it a few minutes here and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to try to count the votes again and we should have empty votes, but this will have to sync to the blockchain. Okay. So now that we can be fairly sure that the transaction has occurred, we're going to count the votes again. And you'll see it's it's empty, right? So all the ballots have been redeemed. The uh, votes votes are showing up as empty, which just means we have successfully closed out uh, this vote. So the final portion of this is not about vote counting, right? At this point, the votes have been counted. They've been downloaded to your machine. Um, the ballots have been redeemed. If we ever did need to recount the votes because these were recorded as datums in the UTX in the EU UTXO model, we can always replay the vote. Um, no need for metadata; uh, it can all be replayed on chain. So that is that is totally acceptable, right? But um, at this point, we are done with the vote. Um, users have now received back their commemorative NFT ballots. Um, but some of those users do not care about their commemorative NF NFT ballots. So uh, this will be integrated into the Wild Tang's voting website. And I encourage uh, vote uh, vote creators to uh, figure out fun ways to integrate this burning. But for us, it'll probably just be a simple button. But the Plutus minting policy we've created as part of this standard actually allows for anyone to burn the token, right? The thought there is... Essentially, these are commemorative, useless NFTs. They have no utility other than proving the vote, and the vote can be replayed on chain. So there's no need to actually keep the token around um, and lock that UTXO. So at the very end of the day, the user who has done the ballots, in this case, it's still us, but we could connect to NAMI or any other sort of wallet that has these ballots. Um, we'll just click this button, burn your counted votes, right? So we'll as the vote creator, we'll have a policy ID in here that'll say this was the vote. Let's look for any of those. And if they exist, um, let's submit it to the Plutus minting policy for burning. What you'll see right here, which is kind of interesting, is that it only shows us losing a quarter ADA, but it also shows us losing those seven assets, right? So you can see here, these ballots are all gonna get burned. Um, right now, those ballots are no longer in the smart contract. The smart contract is empty. It's been totally redeemed, um, but they are at Wild Tangs. So if you go to Wild Tangs, you'll see down here, the Wild Tangs ballot. This is the seven ballots, but I actually want to burn these. I want to free the min UTXO. So I'm going to go and sign this transaction. And even though it's not actually giving me any more ADA, it's freeing up locked ADA and then they're submitted for burning. So I'm going to keep it on this page. The other page will give you a transaction confirmation. But at this point, you know, the Plutus minting policy has been alerted. Um, I want to mint negative seven assets is essentially how it works. Uh, the Plutus minting policy says, yep, anybody can burn these. So that's a totally valid transaction. And then after some period of time, um, pool.pm and other viewers will refresh to show you that um, they are deleting the NFTs. And there we go. They don't exist anymore. So if I try to go back, you'll see that asset classifier, no ballots. And if I look, uh, if I look in Cardano scan, 
should be able to see the most recent transaction was a burn. Yep, we can pop this open and you'll see down here all of these negative one tokens. All right, so at this point, we've concluded the vote. Each user has probably spent about half an ADA to an ADA in chain fees, maybe more if they've updated their vote. And you as the vote counter have had to redeem the ballots um, and that cost you um, some ADA. We do bulk the UTXOs to you know, 20, 30, 40. So if you are doing a vote with a thousand wallet holders, um, this may cost you to redeem the ballots somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 20 ADA, but you have now sent these ballots back. The votes have been counted. It's all been recorded on chain um, and the users can burn their ballots to free up the min UTXO if they please. So hope this is useful. Please let me know if you have any questions and look forward to seeing the uses of it.